And I'm going to be honest. There was a lot of good football. The Miami Dolphins dropping 70 points. The the Buffalo Bills scoring 37 points. The Kansas City Chiefs scoring over 40 points. That, that's just already what we have in week three. But I think the Detroit Lions' impressive win over the Atlanta Falcons can rival some of those games for the more impressive wins because of a couple of different reasons and some of the things in which I saw. Now, I was just surprised. I'm going to come out and say it of how they won the game. I knew it would be a tough game, and I knew it could swing either way. I talked about it in my preview, but I was surprised at the fact that they were way more physical and just really brought it to the Atlanta Falcons. This is this is outside of the box score. Forget any stats. What we saw on the football field was a more physical team in the Detroit Lions. Now, Arthur Smith, Arthur Blink, the culture that they established, everything they're built around with that offensive line is built on physicality. And I was surprised in the fact that Desmond Ritter, we're going to talk about Desmond Ritter, but even that, the protection. Now, the Detroit Lions had one sack in the first two weeks, and pass rush was the theme of everything. What we were talking about, you know, pass rush, it has to be this. James Houston is hurt. We're looking at Charles Harris. Where is he? Aiden Hudson, he's getting pressure. But outside of that, where are the other guys stepping up? And I think that now coming into this game, a lot of questions were answered. Now, there's still some things to be said because you don't want to rest in your lowest. You don't want to say we have seven sacks so we have the best pass rush in the NFL from their standpoint, and they still want to go hunt, look at that, get better within that room. But for the Atlanta Falcons, though, offensive line, and they don't have a bad offensive line. I look at Jake Matthews. I look up. I look at Caleb McGarry. I look at Chris Lindstrom. I look at Dolman. I look at Matthew Bergeron. And I don't think there's any quote unquote weak links in the offensive line. But yesterday, and, and how much of that is also not just the offensive line struggles? How much of that do we point to and say, Desmond Ritter, get the football out? Desmond Ritter, Desmond Ritter you're running into these sacks. Desmond Ritter, where's your pocket presence? How many of those sacks do we credit to that? Because I'm looking at it and I'm saying Desmond Ritter had a really poor game. Now, in the first two games, I thought that he did enough to win. And, and, I talked about Desmond Ritter last year and some of the things in which I saw. And I said that there are some things he definitely has to clean up. And what I've saw, even since Cincinnati, when he was playing with Sauce Gardner, when they went to the college football playoff, accuracy. Now, you got some of your receivers killed. And I, I believe it was either Drake London or it was Kadero Hodge or maybe Mac Hollins. It was one of his receivers. We just threw him across the middle and he was so high with the football. They got absolutely crushed by Detroit Lions safety. Those are the little types of things and some of the timing types of things. Now, he's mobile as it can be. And you have him. He's the numbers game. When you talk about the run game, Bijan, Tyler, Al Greer, you have to you have to account for Desmond Ritter on the ground. But what we saw in this game is that the Detroit Lions, they were physical. They got after the run game. And also, when you get into that position, now you're a second in longs. Now you're a third in longs. And like I just talked about, Desmond Ritter struggling to push the football down the field. Now, I'm not going to put that 100% on Desmond Ritter because one thing I also didn't like, you're down 20 to 6 to the Detroit Lions, and it's about five to four minutes left in the fourth quarter. Where is the urgency? Those are the types of things where I look and I think it's deeper than a player. I'm wondering what's going on. Why are we not pushing the football down the football field? Even if we go three and out, attempt it. We're throwing these, we're throwing these drag routes and these mesh concepts and these crossers, and we're not getting anything down the field. There's no post, there's no corner route, there's no switch concepts. What what are we doing from a passing concept? So I understand this is a run first team, and I love that because it works for them. But when the run got stopped, and I, I wondered it, I talked about it in my preview when the run and if the run gets stopped because i think this is still going to be a good run team that just had a rough day and really the, the game the flow of the game didn't call for running because you look at some of the things in which happened they lost the time of possession but i think it's bigger than that because you're down two scores and you're looking at it we're trying to get back in the game we're fighting we're fighting we're fighting and i'm thinking that for the atlanta falcons they're trying to put points on the board. So if you run the football, yes, you can run it, but it, it just seemed like a game where they had to push the football down the field in the run game, although they could have stuck with it just a little bit longer. It wasn't much consistency in it. So that's one thing that I saw out of the game. But like I said, I think that my biggest thing is I look at the passing game and I look at how the pass rush got after Desmond Ritter. We have to clap it up for the Detroit Lions. It was a lot of things in this game in which I saw from Brian Branch to Tracy Walker to the linebackers to a lot of different things and to a collective aspect of a defensive unit that wanted to win. Now, I think that we knew a couple of things to be true. 
with the defensive line, Aiden Hudson is a problem. He is indeed a problem. Now, James Houston, his nickname is the problem, but Aiden Hudson is really, really a problem. And I think outside of that, Jack Campbell getting his first getting his first sack in the NFL. We look at some of the other guys, Charles Harris, Derek Barnes, Aline McNeil, Benito Jones. It was a sack party. Now, with Brian Branch, though, in the effort, in the edge that he brought to the team, I mean the big time hit on B. John Robinson. I watched it in live time, and it's just a tough break when you have that personal foul call, and he's probably going to get fined for that. It, it's just tough when you hit a guy, and being a guy who played football, you look at it and you say, okay, I have to tackle the man. It's B. John freaking Robinson. What am I going to do? Just let him run past me? So I didn't have any problems with the hit on him per se, but just outside of that, some of the things he did in coverage, running around, making tackles for loss, getting in the backfield, being a big time player. He had three tackles for loss he had two pass deflections does he get a game ball for the Detroit Lions I think yes Aiden Hudson I think he also can get a game ball because that pattern is spin move and it is something that I don't have the film right now but once we get to the film if we talk about the film that's a guy <laughs> I talked about him because I said Aiden Hudson separates me from a Trayvon Walker, from a Kayvon Thibodeau per se, because he's so refined in his pass rush moves. And what do we know about what do we know about Aiden Hudson? Against the run, he is a monster. So when you have that and you mix it with the pass rush skill set, I think that you have a premier number one edge rusher. Now the sack numbers are going to come, but the pressures are already there. So we're seeing that from him. And I do want to talk about a couple things offensively. I think that defense really won you this game because offensively it wasn't a bad day, but penalties. I, now that was kind of uncharacteristic in which I saw from the Detroit Lions. And I think that Ben Johnson called up a sweet game once again, has some exceptional elite passing concepts, of course, and really Jameer Gibbs, 17 carries in this game. So I was questioning how could he step to the table and really sharing the backfield with David Montgomery, some of those other things. Now, Zonovan Knight had a couple carries as well, but Jameer Gibbs really ran the show. And I said it that it was the battle of the backs. Bijan and Al Greer versus Jameer Gibbs. It's two versus one, but when you see that, and he has 4.7 a, uh, a carry, and he had some pretty explosive runs. He had a long run of 21. I'm seeing a guy who, how he was used at Alabama is a little different from what we're seeing now. Now, I think when Montgomery comes back, then you unlock some more of his passing arsenal. But right now, he just looked like a pure runner in week three. And he looked pretty good while doing it. I'll say that. I On film in college, I did not see this contact balance. I did not see this level of physicality from Gibbs. But when you go to Detroit, a physical team, Dan Campbell, it's probably something that gets instilled into you. And then I think when we go outside of that, Jared Goff had a pretty solid game. Now on the interception, he missed. And I think that the last week we talk about it's really room for miscommunication, room for error with the interception. But I think the interception in week three against Atlanta, I think this was more so on him. Now, shout out Jesse Bates. The guy has three interceptions right now. In the three games, he has three interceptions. Cincinnati, how do you lose a guy like that? But getting back to topic, the receiving weapons are really stepping up for this guy. And I think when Jamison Williams comes back, that's something that you really have to look at for the Detroit Lions because Amara St. Brown, I'm starting to get to that point where I know what he's going to be. I know what I'm going to get from him. And that's the best thing you can have in a player. I believe I said that somewhere else, but the best thing and the best feeling is a player that you know what you're getting every single time. Amara St. Brown, I know what I'm getting every single time. And then touching on Sam Laporta, this guy is getting in a conversation with some rookies who've done some special things. Your first three games, having five plus catches, having the yardage that he's accumulated, he's doing that right now. He's being a consistent theme. And we've heard it through the OTAs, through the mini camps, through training camp, and even saw a little taste in preseason, although he had a couple drops in preseason. What we've seen from Sam Laporta, he is a tight end receiving threat. He had a touchdown in this game, had a long of 45 yards, and he had a big time catch on a post route where they just blew the entire coverage for Atlanta. So I'm looking at that and I'm saying, <sighs> when J-Mo comes back, even Khalif Raymond getting some elite separation. I mean, he was running the heck out of some routes from what we saw him. He spe he especially had a route. I believe it was a comeback route somewhere in the red zone where it was just crisp. There was no way you could cover that. I don't care how good of a corner you were or are. So I'm seeing that from the offense. And of course, some of the things we talk about, I think golf was protected pretty well. Zero sacks for the offensive line. So that's something you have to point out and look at. It was some good pressure, but just really not getting golf to the ground from what we saw from Atlanta so I think that Atlanta I I'm not losing too much confidence but I think that I have a concern 
And that's with the passing game over there. Desmond Ritter, you just have to be better. And not even just Desmond Ritter, because I said I didn't like some of the passing concepts and some of the urgency in which I saw. If you're a team that's down, you have to push the football down the field to get back into it. Drake London, Kyle Pitts, those guys. You have Kadero Hodge. You have Mike Hollins. Push the football down the field. But it's also a question that if you're giving up seven sacks, if you're having a day where you're struggling in pass protection, that kind of cripples the offensive play call. It limits the play calls a bit. So two things to look at. I think really a really, really good win from the Detroit Lions. Just have to clean up the penalties, the interception from golf, and then some of the other things. I thought defensively a pretty solid day. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. Atlanta Falcons fan, football fan, Detroit Lions fan, let me know. What is your standpoint? What's your takeaway on this game? And I said, will a week three win mean more for the Lions or the Falcons? The Lions won this game. Drop down what does this mean? In the, in the total perspective of things, what does this week three win mean for the Detroit Lions? That's going to do it for today's show. Thank you for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And now...